Hey everybody, so what's it like to live in Florida? Does it snow anywhere? Are there really alligators walking through downtown? Can I be swallowed up by a sinkhole while I'm sleeping? These are questions that I have been asked before. So what is it actually like to live here in Florida? Well, the answers to those questions and more coming up next. Hey everyone. Dana Weiss here with eXp Realty in gorgeous, sunny Melbourne, Florida. Welcome to my channel. Like and subscribe, let my videographer know, you know, you love what she's doing, that she's doing a great job. So today's video, I wanna talk with you candidly about what is it like to live in Florida. So if you don't live here, it's easy to create this image in your mind of what it's like, right? Snowbirders and snow cones, beaches and bombs, alligators and ants, palm trees and parks. Yep, one more, hurricanes and humidity. You've probably been here at some point on vacation, right? And you thought, wow, would it really be like this to live here? Well, honestly, I have to tell you, that's what my family and I did. We came to vacation at Universal and loved it so much that we all wanted to move to be closer and get those Florida prices. But is there really a vacation all the time? Well, no, of course not. I know I get asked all the time, what is it like? And I'm sure every other person living in Florida does too. So today I thought I'd answer some of the more common questions. Now I did name my channel name, Melbourne Florida Living, and my family and I really love it here. But if you'd like to specifically know about the cost of living here in Melbourne, check out my other video that I did, which is all about the whole video is based on that one thing. What is the cost of living like? So it'll be covered a lot more detail in that one. So, even though we do love it, I will give you as honest an answer on anything that I can because the truth is, Florida living isn't for everyone. And just like every other place in the country, maybe in the world, you wanna have the most realistic idea of what your life might be like if you lived here. And that's the goal of this video. So to give you the best knowledge that I can to make sure you're as in, make an informed decision as you can, I'm just gonna share some, some facts with you. I was born in Gainesville, Florida, but I spent many of my growing up years in Virginia. So I often use that as a basis of comparison. My family and I came back to visit our extended family often, you know, as I was growing up. And the thing that always stuck out to me was humidity, weather and humidity. And I actually covered this in a different video too, but the weather is probably the biggest concern for everyone considering a move down here. And really it should be. Major hurricanes are always top of mind for uh, everyone, especially during hurricane season. And it can really be scary going through one. But even though most people associate hurricanes with Florida, they actually affect all of the Gulf Coast states and the Atlantic states, not just Florida. And although no one wants to deal with a hurricane, we have plenty of warning. And and we know whether or not we need to vacate ahead of time. So that's good. But since we've been dealing with hurricanes so long, our buildings are really built to withstand them as much as possible. Did you know that Florida is known as the lightning capital of the world? Although we just got taken over by Oklahoma, I just read that for the number of strikes from lightning, we are still number one for lightning deaths. The nearly daily summer storms that bring the lightning with them is actually scarier to me than a hurricane that you can vacate from. The humidity as well is especially high high for roughly the same months as hurricane season, kind of May-ish through November-ish. But the trade-off is the winter season where the weather becomes beautiful, kind of like fall time in Virginia for me, that's when Floridians really come out of their homes and hit the outside. Low humidity, warm but not hot weather, and lots of cool breezes really make it seem more like paradise then. No snow or more what I'm used to from Virginia, ice, for us down here. I mean, that's why the snowbirders flock down here then, right? We hardly ever, ever have to pull out a hoodie or a sweatshirt. Basically, it may be hot and humid, but Florida is a tropical climate, so really, that's what it's supposed to be like. Okay, so beach life. What is it like to really live so close to the beach that you can go every day if you want? It's certainly very salty and sandy, as you can imagine. I actually personally love the beach, but I don't get to go nearly as often as I would like to. But if you live here, you can decide that for yourself, just how often you go. And not everybody, of course, likes the beaches. But you don't have to go to the beach, but you certainly can if you would like. I mean, after all, Florida's beaches are certainly one of the main reasons people move to Florida. And of course, we have so many to choose from, from the rougher Atlantic waves on the East Coast to the calmer go Gulf Coast beaches on the west to actually the more rocky beaches that are kind of spread out. We have a beach for everyone. And there's nothing better than sitting under an umbrella in the sun, listening to the waves, lap up on the shore, or watching a rocket take off near if you're in Cape Canaveral while you sit on the sand. But is this beach life really the reality for most non-retired Floridians? 
No, not really. We still have working lives just like anyone else around the country. So even though you may live closer to a beach than other parts of the country, you probably aren't going to be visiting it as often as you might think. Most people make it more of a weekend habit than anything, and over time, as you visit more beaches, you're gonna discover the ones that you prefer. When you live here, you don't want to keep going to the beaches that the tourists go to. And when you have the beaches literally all around the state, you can find those hidden gems that only the locals know about. If you do think that beachfront lifestyle is for you, especially for retirement, then come on down to Florida. We have plenty of options from those condos to single family homes. There's something for everybody. Okay, so I can't talk about Florida without talking about alligators, right? Creatures that are just a part of our world down here in Florida. Does every body of water have one? Well, Probably not, but they most definitely could. And it's something each person should be aware of when they're approaching those little lakes, little ponds. And just because the water doesn't have an alligator, doesn't mean one might not migrate there next week or next month. But even though they can be scary or definitely big, they really don't like to be near humans. But with that said, you do wanna make sure that small children, pets, dogs especially, uh, stay away from the water's edge. Things have been known to happen, but contrary to popular belief and some movies, they normally stay away unless they've lost their fear of humans. But this only happens when they're actually being fed by people, okay? People don't feed the alligators. That's when it becomes a problem. But if anyone spots an alligator, they just need to leave him alone, stay away. More than likely, that alligator is just gonna live his life without ever hurting anyone or anything. But if anyone does have a fear about an alligator, the local Game and Wildlife Commission is there to help. They just have to give them a call. Personally, I kind of think alligators are really cool from a distance and I love to stop and look at them when I do see them. But in all honesty, in the two years that I've been here, I've only ever seen one that wasn't in the zoo. If you're definitely moving to Florida and are just afraid of having a possible alligator in your back pond or lake, you should probably not choose a house near the water. That would be the smart thing. Even though we do have lots of water homes to choose from, there are still plenty that aren't on the water. The traffic, just how bad is the traffic? Well, the answer to this question really depends on where in Florida are you talking about. Naturally, the big metropolitan type of cities are going to be more crowded than the smaller cities, but even the smaller cities can have traffic, you know, during those 8 and 4-ish p.m. rush hours. And that's certainly the case for Melbourne. Traffic isn't usually too bad unless you're trying to get to and from work at 8 and, say, between 4 and 5. But as you can imagine, Florida has had an influx of people moving to the state, right? This whole pandemic thing. And places are getting more and more traffic. If there is a wreck on a major highway, it causes backups. I was actually coming home from church like a week ago and there was a four car pileup. So we were slow crawling it home. It took us nearly 45 minutes longer than it normally would. I would think that's pretty common anywhere for a four car pileup, right? We definitely cannot talk about traffic without mentioning tourist season. Although yes, we have tourists here year round, snowbirders, etc. But I'm talking really like the peak season, which is from March to August. There's definitely going to be a more noticeable amount of traffic in the more touristy areas. But that's another great thing about Melbourne. We are small enough that we aren't really considered a hot spot tourist area. That honor goes to Cocoa Beach as the closest hot spot to us. And of course, a little further north than that is Daytona Beach or further south is West Palm. So naturally the beaches as well as the interstates do get more crowded. But often the tourists coming to the parks go visit the beaches as well. So then the beaches even get more traffic than necessarily normal. So when you add in the factor that a lot of those tourists don't know the area or how to navigate, it can make it a little chaotic to drive. So you have to keep that in mind when driving the highways or the high tourist areas especially. But one last thing on that, I have clients who came from much more dense metropolitan areas, uh, DC for instance, and they don't consider the Melbourne traffic anything to sneeze at at all. So really, it's all relative. Okay, so here's a good one, but can I afford to live in Florida? Well, obviously this answer is gonna depend on a number of things, such as where you're coming from, what you're used to, and the type of job or income that you have. But Florida has some really great incentives for moving to it, such as no state income taxes, low property taxes, and relatively low medium home prices. However, because of hurricanes and extreme weather, our homeowner's insurance is more expensive, as well as car insurance 
and I cover that in another video as well. Now sales tax does vary depending on the county and it can get a little pricey. For Bard County, which is where Melbourne is, the current sales tax is only 7% as of a 2021. Of course, there are pros and cons to living in Florida, but you really do get to enjoy the outdoor lifestyle just as much as you want to. We're always trying to attract the best here to Brevard County, and for us, that's much of the Space Coast industry. We're definitely the happening place for that industry, and we have a lot to offer. So if you come for a visit and you decide this is the place for you, make the wise choice and give me a call. I'm happy to help you find that dream spot. I hope this video helps you decide if Florida might be a place you'd actually want to live in. See you next video.